The 87th session of the Texas legislature began on Tuesday. The crucial lawmaking time only rolls around once every two years, but this one will be very different than what we've seen in the past. From a leaner state budget to virtual learning policies to coronavirus restrictions, Texas lawmakers are facing a brand new set of issues this year. Earlier this week, I sat down with Republican Charlie Guerin of Fort Worth to hear more on what we can expect this session. Republican State Representative Charlie Guerin of Fort Worth, thank you so much for joining us. As you know, the start of the legislative session is upon us. Uh, as chair of the House Administration Committee, you've worked on getting the House and uh, part of the Capitol ready uh, for the session uh, and make sure that it's safe for uh, representatives and also uh, employees and members of the public. So uh, talk to us a little bit about what has been done to do that. Uh, Jack, we've, uh, and, and thank you for having me on. We have, uh, over the last six or seven months, have been working on ways to make the capital a safe environment. And that includes uh, purchasing air purifiers for uh, all of the offices, all of the committee rooms, all of the uh, meeting rooms in the Capitol, uh, as well as purchasing UV sanitizing robots. Uh, we're going to, it's, uh, there'll be masks. Uh, currently their masks are required in the, all of the common areas of the Capitol. Uh, there's free testing available to anybody that wants it on the Capitol grounds. It's not required to enter the Capitol. It will be required on opening day for anyone that will be in the gallery or in the chamber, on the chamber floor. Uh, we're going to be providing members with masks, uh, Clorox wipes, uh, uh, hand sanitizer for their offices. And it'll be up to each member whether they're going to require masks or uh, appointments to be in their office. We're going to encourage them to try to keep the number of people in their office to a minimum uh, so they can achieve social distancing, but the air purifiers we bought are the, uh, are the same manufacturer that uh, are the filters that are the purifiers that they use at MD Anderson in the critical care unit. So uh, now we're not able to use those in the chamber, but we've uh, purchased some filters to go in the HVAC system that are similar, just not quite as effective. Uh, but it's, it, it's been a, it's been a rocky six months, even though we haven't been in the Capitol trying to get ready for Tuesday. Uh, we're, and hopefully we can make it a safe environment. Um, we're going to, we're going to provide testing throughout the session, uh, at no cost outside the Capitol. There will be testing facilities inside the Capitol, uh, but none of that's required. Now there, uh, some members may require, testing before coming in their office. Uh, we're not, we're going to, in, in my office, I'm going to require masks. Uh, hopefully, uh, and later today, we are on a call with the governor uh, about the enhanced distribution of the vaccine that's, that's, I think, I believe is starting today. The call is not until 1130. And so I won't know until then, but uh, we're going to jack up the distribution uh, on the vaccines as we are able to get them from the federal government. Um, and I, I definitely want to ask you more about that, but just going back and asking you about the uh, preparations for opening day. I mean, historically, obviously, it's a big uh, celebration there when people, when members are taking the oath, they've got their uh, families, you know, spouses, children, parents, in some cases, um, that's not going to look like that this year, right? And no, it's not. The, uh, where before you would have uh, two seats at your desk beside yours and then two more available to each member on the floor outside the rail. This time it's, there'll be nobody sitting by you uh, except your desk mate. Uh, the guests on the floor, uh, there will be the new members will each have two seats for guests outside the rail. The rest of those will be uh, filled up. The few seats that are there are on the floor will be filled up by one seat per member by seniority until we run out. And then the, the rest of the members guests at 
two seats each will be allocated in the gallery. Uh, we're moving the press corps to the gallery on the west on the west end. No, excuse me, the east end of the gallery, and then there are a limited number of seats available to the general public, uh, and they they went out on a website, I believe, last week, and those seats have been taken. The gallery, as well as the floor, will be social distancing, uh, and for until the rules are adopted, which will be probably later next week, uh, what actually is going to happen uh, each day after opening day is still up in the air. Uh, masks are going to be required on opening day. Um, some members will uh, pull theirs down while they take the oath. Uh, I probably won't. I'll probably keep mine up uh, since I'm in that over 65, in fact, over 70 range. And so, but it'll be up to each member whether they want to pull it down when they when they take the oath. But it's uh, the the ceremony itself will be shorter. We've encouraged uh, the Secretary of State to keep her speech as short as possible. Uh, a lot of the pageantry of opening day uh, is going to be missing. We're going to try to hold the whole ceremony to an hour and a half. And typically. Governor Abbott addresses uh, both the House and the Senate. And has that been uh, figured out yet how he's going to do so? My understanding is that he will not actually go to the chamber as he historically has done. Well, it was, it was my understanding as of yesterday that he still intended to come to the House chamber. Oh. Uh, but, but that's up in the air. It, you know, that final decision won't be made until Monday afternoon. Okay. Uh, it's, I mean, it's, you know, Governor Abbott obviously is uh, is in a high risk category, uh, just like a bunch of us that are over sixty five, uh, and so that decision, that final decision, is going to be made on Monday. But as of right now, we're we're preparing to set it up to accommodate Governor Abbott. Okay, um, and and let me just ask, uh, with regards to the Capitol, uh, will mask wearing be strictly enforced? Uh, it's my understanding that DPS is in charge of mask wearing and making sure that uh, crowds don't congregate in in the public areas. And yes, to, it's my understanding as of last night that DPS is in charge of enforcing that, and I believe that they will. And I wanted to ask you, uh, when we were talking earlier, um, I asked you what your priority is this session. Uh, and it's really to keep uh, the virus from spreading in the capital. Is that right? We that's my number one priority is to have protocols that where we can effectively uh, prevent an outbreak in the capital, so we don't have to shut the entire building down uh, for sanitization. And and that's why right now. The Capitol's closed on Saturday and Sunday. They do a complete disinfect over the weekends. Uh, now, as we get into session, the committees are appointed. The committees start to meet. The hours of the Capitol will expand. And anytime we're in session, obviously, or in a committee hearing, the Capitol will be open. But uh, as I said, the rules will be voted on probably next week, late in the week. And that will determine uh, you know, how we go forward. And there, it's likely to have a lively debate over different things, uh, masks, uh, social distancing. As you know, there are some members that are not gonna require a mask in their offices and there are others that are. There's some members that are uh, gonna require an appointment to enter their offices and others are not. Uh, we're gonna provide standardized signage uh, for all the members that want masks or, or don't want masks, excuse me, I'll turn that off. Uh, and so it, it, it'll it differ by member's office, but not by, uh, you know, the, the public area of the Capitol will be requiring masks. And uh, we, it's a, it's a challenge, but it's, it's a challenge I think that we can meet and still keep the building open to the public. Uh, there may we may have to and I believe we will limit capacity there's not going to be any public tours of the capitol you won't see the large groups of, of school children 
wandering through the capital uh, because you know the the fire capacity on the capital right now is a little over six thousand, and we're going to try to keep that down to probably around two thousand. So a third of it. About a third capacity. Because usually on the first day, on opening day, there's large crowds of people gathering for their various different causes. And a lot of the times they will line the staircases uh, near the chambers. I don't believe that you'll see that this time. I, you know, BPS has been charged with uh, enforcing social distancing and keeping the crowds moving. Uh, the, the seats in the gallery, as well as for the, uh, the guests on the floor are socially distanced. Um, everyone that's in the gallery, and, and this includes the press, and on the floor will have to test prior to uh, coming into the chamber. And obviously that's a rapid test that people will be able to find out the results within 15 minutes? That's correct. And um, given what we saw happen at the US Capitol, uh, this week. Have there been discussions, new discussions about security at the Texas Capitol? Well, as you know, I couldn't go. I, answer is yes, I cannot go into the details on that. But what happened in the U.S. Capitol is not going to happen at the Texas Capitol. Um, wanted to ask you, obviously, this year with COVID, um, we have heard, and obviously we'll get an update from the Texas Comptroller on Monday about uh, sales tax and other revenues and, and what the legislature will have uh, to spend. And I'm just wondering how concerned you are about the possibility of requiring budget cuts given you know, all the other priorities that have, you know, you still have to fund education from the last session, the Im improvements that were made, but all there's public health, et cetera. Uh, what, what's your concern about that? Well, that's one of my priorities is going to be to fight to maintain the, uh, the funding for public education that we approved last time. I do think there are going to be deep budget cuts. Uh, we'll know on Monday what the spending cap is. And once we know that, then we plan going forward. Uh, but a priority for me is to maintain the funding that, that we passed uh, in the 86th legislature. And I'm gonna work very hard uh, to do that. Uh, we've got, we owe it to public ed. Uh, and it was a priority for the members last time. And I believe it will be this time. Uh, there will be deep budget cuts though, I believe. And uh, let me ask you as far as there have been some conversations by Republicans and Democratic lawmakers who had wanted the governor to call them back for a special session uh, to deal with the pandemic. Do you think that there will be changes made, there will be a bill passed that would require the governor to call in the legislature during an emergency such as the pandemic? I don't know, I, I have not read the what has been filed yet in order to do that. I believe that uh, given the circumstances, uh, that Governor Abbott's done a good job with this. And so, uh, you know, special sessions cost a little over a million dollars a month just on the House side. Uh, and that money, you know, you have to look at whether it's wise to bring everybody in and spend that money or whether we need to be spending that money other places, yes. We received CARES Act money, but as we spent what we hope to be approved by the feds, we don't know that it will be. And so you know, we, the House has over a million dollars in CARES Act funding, hopefully that will be approved, but we don't know. And so as we, like as the House budget's going forward, uh, we have to look at whether, you know, if that money is not approved for CARES Act funding, uh, where are we going to get it? Uh, you know, we we put up plexiglass in all the committee rooms to protect the members and staff during the committee. Uh, we're going to social distance as well in there. It's, it will limit uh, the press in there. But I, I'm not, you know, I'm going to wait to hear the arguments of, of what benefit us coming in would be. Uh, I'm not sure that there definitely is a benefit. And my the governor, and well, the governor has 
has had several phone calls and taken questions and listened to the concerns. I think that he has been uh, responsive to the members' concerns. I don't. I haven't talked to one member that has not been able to talk to the governor if they tried to. Now, some have said that you know the governor didn't reach out to them. I don't know that that's his responsibility. I think it's more of a responsibility of the member reaching out to the governor's office. He's had an awful lot on his plate. And my last question to you is about the presumptive new speaker, Dave Phelan of Beaumont. Um, your thoughts on, on him? Do you support him? I do support him. Dave, Dave is a hardworking, very smart uh, legislator. Legislator. He's had, uh, you know, he's, he started uh, working, he's worked with Dick Army. Uh, he's worked with, uh, with Tommy Williams uh, and Jeff Style. I mean, uh, and Mr. Stiles, Representative Stiles, and that was before I was in the legislature, but he he has done, Dave's a smart guy, and he he is a straight shooter. He will not lie to you, uh, and I, I think he's going to do a great job, and the staff that he has hired up to this point are phenomenal. He's done a, an excellent job in, in his staffing. All right, State Representative Charlie Guerin of Fort Worth, thank you so much for joining us. You stay healthy.